Politics is a very interesting game. William Samai Ruto was in Busia County yesterday. And in his speech, he fondly referred to Raila Amolo Dinga as a guambo. And Kenyans are talking about that particular speech. Because if that event were to be in the same old Kenya region, or even Rift Valley, chances are high that William Ruto would have referred to Raila Amolo Dinga as Yule Mganga or Yule Jama Wakitenda Wili. In this video today, I want us to do a critical analysis of that speech by William Samoy Ruto in Busia, in Busia yesterday. But before we do that, if you are watching this video for the first time, please click, take a second or two and click the subscribe button. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys. And please, please, give this video a thumbs up. Nauliza nyinyi. Si mimi ndio nilisukuma aguambo. Mpaka akakuwa prime minister. Nyinyi mliniona nikimfanyia campaign na guambo 207 mpaka akakuwa prime minister. Si nilimsukuma mpaka akakuwa prime minister. Mpaka hata nikapelekwa hii karibu nifungwe. Ama Si nilisukuma aguambo mpaka akakuwa prime minister. Mimi nauliza nyinyi. Tangu ni waje kusukuma aguambo mumeona amepata kitu kingine yoyote? <laughs> Eh? Busia. Sasa mimi niwaulize. Siku ile niliwaachia kina Kalonzo. Nikawaachia kuna Mundabadi. Nikawaachia kina Weta. Si waliangaisha huyo baba sasa ni mtu tu ya kutembea baba. Sasa hiyo watu ni watu bure. Tangu niwaachie wamesukuma huyo baba amefikisha yeye mahali popote. No back to the main issue. William Ruto was in Busia County yesterday. Busia County is Raila Odinga's stronghold for a very long time. And in his speech, William Ruto referred to Raila Amolo Dinga as a guambo. And on this channel, I've actually received several requests to do a video on that particular topic. And most people were actually asking me why William Samuel Ruto referred to Raila Amolo Dinga as a guambo. Because for, the, for a long time, he had never done that. And they were also reminding me that of all key political players in this country, it's only William Samuel Ruto, who was among the first leaders to wish Raila Amolo Dinga quick recovery when he was found with the virus. But why do you think William Samuel Ruto used the term or the words Aguambo? I want to go straight to the points. Number one, Anytime you hear William Ruto refer, refer to Raila Molo Dinga as a guamba or baba, only one thing. It either means that the ground is hostile to him or is in Raila Odinga's stronghold. Whenever Ruto is in Nyanza, he would always refer to Raila Amolo Dinga as either baba or a guamba. Busia County is Raila Odinga's stronghold. So probably William Ruto realized from the mood because William Ruto has this ability to really understand his crowd and his audience. So probably he realized that I'm in another territory. So the best way for me to do is to refer to Raila Molo Dinga as a guambo. So that's the first thing. He was in Raila Dinga's stronghold. And as usual, whenever he is in Raila Dinga's stronghold, he would call Raila Dinga Baba Aguambo. So that's the first reason why William Ruto called Raila Odinga Agwambo and not Yule Jamua Kitendawili Ama Muganga. That's number one. Number two, which I think is also very important, William Ruto is actually trying to reduce <laughs> the political significance of NASA principles, the political significance of Musalia Mdavadi, the political significance of Kalonzo Musioka, and the political significance of Moses Wetangula. Why am I saying this? William Ruto explained to the audience there that when he was with the Guambo, he made Raila Dinga the Prime Minister. Of course, that's debatable 
because even when he was at the Pentagon, there were five people. And even Kanozo Musioka today can wake up and claim that he also made Raila Odinga part of the handshake. Because if you ask me, Raila Odinga has enjoyed power through the handshake than he did when he was the Prime Minister. When Raila Odinga was the Prime Minister of the Republic of Kenya, he was complaining all through. Mwe Kibaki government and his allies made it difficult for him whenever he attended functions. Raila Odinga would, Raila Odinga would not even find the local administration there. Today, Raila Odinga is enjoying a lot of power, despite the fact that he's just a mere Kenyan. Raila Odinga doesn't hold any constitutional office, unlike in when he became the Prime Minister of the Republic of Kenya. But Ruto is reducing the political significance of these guys. Why do you think it's reducing the political significance of these guys? Simple. Busia County is Raila Odinga's stronghold. Despite that, there are certain supporters of Musele Mudavadi who voted for Raila Odinga. There are supporters of Moses Wetangula from Busia County who voted for Raila Odinga. And then there are supporters of uh, Kalonzo Musioka. Significant number of campers are in uh, Busia who also voted for Raila Odinga and not President Uhuru Mugia Kenyatta. This is the group William Ruto is trying to target with his messaging. By reducing the political significance of these guys, he wants these guys to understand that apart from Raila Odinga, it's only him who is significant politically speaking. In my considered opinion, William Ruto is trying to reduce the political significance or the role of the NASA principles around Raila Amolodinga with the sole intention of making those people make him the alternative to Raila Amolo Odinga. Number three, which I think is also significant, is that William Ruto is trying to appeal, he was trying to appeal to the emotions of the ODM supporters. And that's his politics. That's the exact opposite of whatever he does while in central Kenya. When, Raila Odinga, when William Ruto is in central Kenya, he's also appealing to their emotions. And how do you appeal to the emotions of the people of the Mount Kenya region? You remind them about Raila Amolodinga. That's why whenever he was is in uh, central Kenya, William Ruto would always tell them that when the entire NASA brigades wanted to remove Uhuru, refused to support Uhuru Kenyatta, it was only me. But now he was in Odium strongholds. He's appealing to their emotions. And how do you appeal to the emotions of the supporters of Raila Amolodinga? Simple. Invoke the memory of the Prime Minister. And the picture of William Ruto during that time, talking passionately, talking strongly, advocating for Raila Amolodinga. In fact, there are so many NASA, there are so many ODM supporters, Raila Odinga supporters, who believe up to now that if Raila Odinga wanted to become the president, he would not have agreed to form coalition government with Mwai Baki. They believe that William Ruto had insisted that Raila Odinga must allow the war to continue. But when Raila Odinga went to, I think it was Russia, people are saying that when Raila Odinga went to Russia hospital in Kisumu and they opened the morgue and bodies were lying all over, when Raila left that place, that's the moment he decided this is not going to be to continue. And that's how he called off the demonstrations. ODM supporters believe that Raila Odinga committed a mistake by agreeing to support, I mean, to call off the demonstrations. So basically, William Ruto is appealing to their emotions to remember the 2007 general election. ODM supporters are very bitter, especially over that election, because they believe strongly that Raila Odinga won. So that's the best thing for Ruto to appeal to their emotions. And he's even going further to invoke the ICC. He's telling them that Mimi ndio nilimskuma mpaka nikapelekwa ICC. So basically he's saying that I went to ICC because of standing strong for Raila Amolo Odinga. That's something he can't say in the larger Mount Kenya region. 
if in if he's in a central Kenya region, he will tell these people how Raila Odinga fixed him at the ICC. So basically, William Ruto is trying to appeal to the emotions of the people or of the supporters of Raila Amol Odinga. Number four, I also strongly believe that William Ruto wanted the attention of the people of Busia. They wanted these people to listen to him. Probably other speakers who spoke before him, he had studied the mood on the ground there. And people were not taking most of their speeches seriously. Remember in the last election, Ababu Namwamba, who was the ODM Secretary General, left ODM party and joined Jubilee party. And they had hoped that even if they were not going to win Busia, at least they were going to get substantial number of votes from that region. It never happened. So Ruto understands the politics there. So he wanted to get the attention of these people to listen to him. Then how do you get the attention of this audience to listen to you? Invoke, appeal to their emotions. Invoke what they love. And because they love Raila Molodinga, he invoked that name of Aguambo. Remember, Raila Odinga is currently in hospital. So he invoked the name of Aguambo. And then these people then decided, okay, let us listen to what the hustler is trying to say. And the hustler now goes ahead to explain to them his past with Raila Odinga. Then after that, I'm sure, he went further to justify why the people of Busia should actually go ahead and vote for him. Remember, in Kabushai, he lost. In Matungu, where he was uh, expected to win, again, his candidate lost. And not just lost. There is a place in uh, Matungu, it's called Indasia or Indalasia, somewhere there, where he held a serious political rally. And during that rally, he reminded the people of the larger Mount Western Kenya that their problem is only one. That whenever they're in problems, they're, they're reaching out to him. But if he think Wakati were votes, then they don't vote for him. So I think he's now realizing that that strategy he's been using there is not working for him. So he's now developing a strategy of appealing to these people, seeking for their attention by mentioning Raila Odinga. And then once he got their attention, then it's now possible that he was able to, uh, to ask them for whatever he wanted to ask them. Number five is 2022 politics. There's, the, there's been this talk within the political circles that Uhuru, that, sorry, that Ruto and Raila might actually work together in 2022. You don't rule out that. You can always tell things from the body language. William Ruto allies have reduced their attacks on Raila Molodinga. Raila Odinga is currently in hospital. Again, that's an opportunity. I'm not going to elaborate that further. Because assuming Raila Odinga will get out of hospital and the doctors will tell him, please have a rest, don't continue the politics. What do you think is going to happen? His supporters will be left there. So William Ruto is seeing an opportunity of Raila Odinga exiting political scene. And because, and I've said this several years, in fact, the only thing uh, people don't listen to is sometimes what I say. By the time Ruto was going into Jubilee, or for leaving Odium Party, he was the most popular leader amongst the Luland, in Luland for example. Up to now, people still have a lot of soft spot for him. But every time Ruto opens his mouth to talk about Yule Mganga and Yule Jamam Wakitadawili in a derogatory manner, these people become very bitter. And I remember in one of my videos here, I explained that all the efforts Ruto is making in Nyanza are going to fail. They're going to fail because the people pursuing, the people Ruto is using to appeal to the people of Nyanza are not the right people. You know, you can't use, for example, someone like uh, my friend Eli Dovalo because he's disagreed with the Raila Odinga. He's disagreed with the Raila Odinga, then you expect him, because he disagreed with the Raila Odinga, to win your votes. 
the TNA party used Onyango laws, a, a man who was not known. And Onyango laws approach to politics in Nyanza was totally different from what William Ruto is trying to do. Despite the fact that Nyanza people never voted for TNA in 2013, the fact of the matter is that these guys had a free hand. They would all rallies, activities in this region without any problem. But Tuju had a problem. Tuju, when he was attacking Raila Odinga, these people would not listen to him. So I'm looking at opportunity. I'm looking at a situation where Ruto has sat down and has figured out how can I inherit these votes of Raila Amundodinga? The only way is to do whatever he did in Busia. I don't know what you think. Please, that's my, my thoughts. And if you're watching this video for the first time, take a second or two, click subscribe button. And to the subscribers, please again, just give this particular video a thumbs up. It's a request. Just do that so that algorithm can promote it. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Thank you.